Our utter obsession with the neighboring planet Mars is only growing stronger. The more we learn about our own civilization, the more we look to the stars and indeed the solar system. The more increasingly interesting is our growing curiosity among the masses that we are from somewhere else other than Earth. Everything is anomalous about our existence here on Earth. We do ponder over the idea proposed in Genesis regarding Noah's Ark. The Great Flood narrative was the Ark of the Earth trying to find dry land after a cataclysmic period of uncertainty. Perhaps the Ark landed into the waters of this planet after a period of interstellar travel. We are aware that this sounds crazy, but why does it sound crazy to us? It is only crazy because we think of that as being impossible. Now, when you suggest such a thing, of course we are leaving ourselves exposed to ridicule. We get that, but why is it impossible? When we look into the ancient records, we see that the ancient Hindus had flying technology. We see the Sumerians depicting the planets of the solar system thousands of years before we discovered them, and there are tales in every single societal culture of beings descending from the sky. There is even evidence in Peru in the form of the Nazca lines that the people were abandoned and are in fact signaling to the sky as if they thought that maybe they had been forgotten. The Assyrians are a very interesting culture. In many ways, this civilization may be telling us of things of incredible importance. These peoples are showing us the importance in stone reliefs of this bucket, or as some may call it, the handbag of the gods. This handbag is seen across the entire planet from Aboriginal art to Aztec statues and there's plenty of debate as to what they are showing us here. Some saying a bucket of water and others suggesting it is a container for seeds. No doubt the importance of agriculture was utterly essential in the ancient past and this could be the seeds that we brought with us on the ark as we look to work the earth for food. This culture emerged very close to the Mount Ararat, where the Ark is said to have come to rest. It is also the foothills and surrounding areas that agriculture emerged. These people are also showing us the Tree of Life, or the Sacred Tree. This Sacred Tree is eerily showing what appears to be DNA related to humans. It is also showing the king on both sides, pointing at the sky where there is a flying machine. This is unmistakable. Is this the Ark that brought us here? One of many, perhaps. A group of deities appear in the writings of many cultures, including the Assyrians, and we refer to them as the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki is an incredibly popular reference point in our understanding of who we are and where we came from. Why? Well, because within the contextual records of these writings, we may have the answer. These writings are telling us specifically that the Anunnaki came here to mine the earth for gold in order to save the atmosphere of their own planet. It tells us this planet is in orbit of the sun and spectacularly in 2016 Caltech stunned the world by confirming that a planet had been detected in the farthest to reach parts of the solar system which orbited the sun every 26,000 years. The texts are telling us that they created a slave race of beings on the earth to do this job on their behalf and it is possible that we are that slave race. The longevity of these gods is glorified in their kingship. It would seem that a 30,000 year reign was commonplace and again points to our short lifespans. Could the Earth be stopping us from living into these realms of existence? Nowhere, however, does it say that humans are not from the Earth. Why would it? But one thing is entirely clear that nobody can deny, and that being the simple thought of heaven. Think about this. Within this thought process, we are remembering that we are from somewhere else and inevitably return to this place at the point of death. Almost like we are emotional tourists and our body is the capsule to contain our life within. Doesn't this simple but very profound thought invoke the awakening mind? Planet Mars has stunning similarities with that of the Earth. We see statues that appear to be Egyptian in origin. We even see the twin peaks that look like two huge pyramids and a sphinx that is similar to that at Giza. We see the Valles Marineris, the Grand Valley, extends over 3,000 kilometers long. 
spans as much as 600 kilometers across and delves as much as 8 kilometers deep. By comparison, the Earth's Grand Canyon is 800 kilometers long, 30 kilometers across, and 1.8 kilometers deep. The origin of the Valles Marineris remains unknown, although a leading hypothesis holds that it started as a crack billions of years ago as the planet cooled with more lively ideas suggesting that both canyons were the result of the use of a super weapon during a space war between planets which led to the destruction of one planet that is now the asteroid belt and stripping Mars of its atmosphere. Maybe, just maybe, the story of the Ark is a rescue mission on Mars to bring the life to the Earth, which still had its atmosphere, despite being involved in this war itself. When the Ark reached the Earth, it crashed in the ocean and drifted until it found land. The anomalies on Mars are sensational, to say the least. Last year, new images appeared to show an erupting volcano at Olympus Mons, but this couldn't be proven. More recent observations prove that methane was being released. To have methane on a planet, you first need rotting materials to produce the gas. We humans vent methane, as do all animals on the Earth, so to have it on Mars, this must highlight the fact that the red planet must have had some form of vegetative life in the past to produce the gas on this scale. Wetlands are the major natural source of methane produced in this way, so this leads to heightened speculation as to what is taking place beneath the Martian surface, including the possibility of more waterways and maybe even life beneath the surface. Curiosity alerted us to this presence, and the Mars Express orbiter confirmed this leading to widespread claims that Mars has all the ingredients needed for life to be sustained. There are a variety of ways methane might be produced on Mars. If microbes still exist, they are one possible source. Methane produced by microorganisms in the distant past could also get trapped within ice. When the ice melts, it could then release the ancient methane into the atmosphere. What is going on with Mars is incredible. We now have access to imagery from space and also on the ground, and the more we see, the more we see. This planet seems to have been a place of habitation in the very remote past. You have to wonder what went on to bring about its destruction. Maybe we knew what happened here, and maybe that is why the red planet was named for the god of war. And Cairo City being named after this planet is another strange little coincidence. There seems to be a real connection here, guys, and of course, we will be looking into this further as the years roll on. We will leave it at that for the moment, guys. We hope you have enjoyed the show as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you. Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.